I haven't done anything. That's what makes it such a great job, right? Wow. Yeah, you can't make it to the hospital. Yeah, he's still in the car. He's just not here. Let us know last night that that wasn't going to happen. Should I be live now? I'd like to call the Citizens Board a review of the City of Sheboygan uh, into session, please. This time, I'd like roll call of those board members present. And Ken King. Shall we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This time, I'd like to uh, have introduced those individuals who are present today uh, from the assessor's office, as well as the city attorney. Chuck Adams, city attorney. Mike Lagoda, assessor. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, confirmation of, from the clerk. Uh, Appropriate notifications have gone out and have been posted as required. They have all gone out and been posted. All right, at this time, we need to select the chairperson for the board. Are there any nominations? I nominate Ken King. Is there a second? I second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. I am elected. <laughs> Selection for vice chair. Do we have a nomination? What's your first name? First name? Pat. I nominate Pat. <laughs> okay, we have a nomination for Pat to be in vice chair. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay, passes. Thank you, Pat. Um, verification of training. Ken King and Kathleen Donovan have both taken the training this year. Both have been uh, certified. Yes. Okay. We would like to um, verify that the city of Sheboygan has adopted the ordin ordinance um, containing, considering the confidentiality of income and expense information that's provided to the assessor. Could that be verified by the city attorney? Yes. Okay. 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 Thank you. We are in compliance. Um, there are no new laws or procedures at this time uh, that I am aware of. Hearing none. To go off the record, okay. At this point, we would like to do some uh, update and training and procedures and as uh, the board should function. Uh, there have been some changes uh, in the procedures and, uh, that we will be taking a look at. If you take a look at the training materials that were provided to you, go right in front of you, Pat. Right in front of you, Pat. In front of you. <laughs> Thank you. You are. Nope. No, it's not. The things that we would like to point out. And, uh, oh no, it's. Cork and I uh, work together on this so that we can get a better understanding of how to run the sessions more efficiently and uh, eliminate some possibility of uh, objections in the future. Okay. Um, if you want to move closer, we can. Okay. 
if you would turn to page 13 in the uh, requirements and turning uh, training manual uh, that's off, uh, offered by the extension as part of the education. Okay, if you take a look, um, the past practice has been that the board would introduce the cases and the clerk should be introducing the cases. So the uh, city clerk will be responsible for introducing the cases, providing the information that is necessary um, and also swearing in the individuals that will be testifying. Um, at that point, um, we will get the verification from the assessor as far as what that information is, if there's any other changes um, to the objection form, okay? Um, the clerk in the city of Sheboygan is not a member of this board um, and therefore does not have the ability or uh, responsibility of voting on any motion, okay? Um, if we take a look at the chair's responsibilities, which is the next um, section, we have, uh, I'm proud to say, have been in compliance uh, pretty much all of the time uh, <laughs> with all the items um, and the procedure that we follow. And again, just as a quick review, uh, the assessor is assumed to be correct until uh, documentation is proven otherwise. The objector is the first to testify. Um, after they testify, the assessor can ask questions. The board can ask questions. At that point, the assessor then uh, will do their presentation and the person or organization objecting can ask the assessor as well as the board. Okay. Uh, at that point, the chair will ask if there's any additional testimony. Um, and if there is none, the hearing is closed and no additional testimony um, or information can be provided to the board um, uh, for deliberation purposes, okay? Um, at that point, the chair's responsibility is to inform the objector and the assessor that in fact, uh, the deliberation and discussion on the objection and the, 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 their decision will be made at the end of the hearing, um, at the end of hearings, excuse me, and that they will be notified within 10 days by the uh, city clerk of what the outcome is. So any questions? All right, so uh, very minor changes in the way that we do business. Um, but it allows us to be in full compliance as it's now laid out. Okay? That is why we don't have a secretary anymore? Right. Okay. The right. clerk is going to do all Previously, that. we had a secretary that did the clerk's responsibility. Mm -hmm. So, um, any questions um, concerning any of the ways we would operate, okay, or do operate mm -hmm. under the guidelines? Um, Meredith, was there anything else that you feel we need to cover? No. I think I hit all the points. Think, oh, was that this was mine? <laughs> was that mine? Yeah, this is yours. Oh, see, that's why I didn't have it. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, we'll go back on record then. Um, We need to review uh, and adopt the policy regarding the procedure for sworn testimony and sworn written testimony. Uh, again, that has been previously approved by the uh, city. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. They're attached to board docs. Okay. Attached to the agenda, but those are the ones that were adopted right. last year. Okay. Um, so, uh, likewise, the waiver of board hearing requests. Um, were approved last year and are still in force, is that correct? And the city attorney acknowledges that in fact that's the case. Um, at this time we would like to um, receipt the assessor's qualifications. 
Michael, if you could be so kind. I'll let the board review these. Sheboygan Board of Review will accept the uh, uh, qualifications and credentials as presented in part of the record for um, Michael Groda, Darcy Beanick, Rayanne Schmitz. Those have been passed on to the clerk. Um, at this time, I would entertain a motion to accept the role as presented by the assessor for purpose of this hearing. I move we accept. Motion. Second. And second to approve the assessment role as presented. At this time, um, do we have any waivers that should be presented? We have a request from A. Okay. Um, we have a request to waive the 48 hour requirement um, for a hearing. Uh, is that acceptable to the board? Yes. 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 yes, it is. Yes. Okay. Uh, we will accept that uh, on behalf of Faye Wingrove. And uh, do we need to schedule a hearing time on that then? We can do that this morning. She has not come. She has an objection form. I believe Faye is here. Okay. All right. We will get you on the schedule. Um, at this time, um, we have currently two objections and four waivers to be considered. Do you want to? So the first waiver is for um, parcel number five nine two eight one four seven nine one two zero. That is the Walmart stores at 3711 South Taylor Drive. And it is a request for a waiver of the board. Okay, we have a, a request for a waiver. Discussion. Okay. 
much discussion by the assessor. Okay. It's been reviewed. I would entertain a motion to accept the waiver on the property stated. I, Any questions? <laughs> no. I um, put in that request. Okay. Motion? Second? Second. Motion and second to uh, approve the waiver as requested. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The next objection. The next is a request for a waiver from Washington Schools Apartments, LLC. And their parcel number is 5928171972 Property address at 1238 Geely Avenue. Or to have the opportunity to review those. Okay. Any other questions of the board? No. If not, I'd entertain a motion to approve the waiver at the, this address. Have a motion, second. Second. Motion and second to approve the waiver as requested. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Passes. Next waiver request. And this one I might have Mr. Groda talk about. Bill Ardern is going to come at 930 because he wanted to make sure that he was here for the waiver re request to be present. I, I think uh, before uh, the board consider a waiver, I would like uh, there's lots of detailed information. Okay. So we should wait for Can time. we? Uh, wait till 930. I would like here. you to uh, make sure that your uh, comments uh, are not restricted to a piece of property, but generalization of the assessment process. Sure. Okay. Thank you. So I, I think uh, re regarding this you know, or granting the waiver is I might request uh, the board subpoena information on the two properties that Mr. Ardern is uh, bringing forth. So it's customary to uh, request information um, in detail regarding income and expenses, is that correct? It is. Okay as well as comparable sales? I believe in this case it is very important. Uh, uh, this general information? Yes. Okay. So just so the board is clear um, that as we take a look at these waivers, those are the things that we are, uh, that the assessor is considering and basing his uh, uh, testimony on. Correct? Correct. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to inform the board of in general? In general, regarding waivers, no, sir. There, yeah. are, there are not waivers filled out for these two properties either. They're just objection forms. Okay, they're just objection forms. I'm sorry. Okay. But there's more to it, yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we will defer this property until 930 hearing. Is there another objection form that needs to be reviewed? There's one other objection, but they have an appointment at 10. Okay. Faye? 
Would you be ready to? Okay. All right. At this point, uh, would you have a copy of the objection form to present to the board? So the objection form is brought by Faye Wingrove for Tech Hub LLC. Um, it was filed this morning and the um, property address is for 807 Center Avenue, 532 North 8th Street. Um, it says the assessment shown total value was 400000 456,100 and their opinion of the assessed value is 325,100. Would you like me to swear everybody in? Yes, please. All right, so I need everybody that's going to be testifying to raise their right hand. Do you solemnly swear, affirm that the testimony in which you are about to give in the matter now in this hearing shall be the tr truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. And could you each state your name and your address for the record? Faye Wingrove, 807 Center Ave, Sheboygan, home address, uh, 322 North 7th Street, Sheboygan. I can move Mike is set up here. I wonder if we can stay with that. Certainly. Okay. And that way, Mike. Just back up. <laughs> it still lets me to repeat. I don't know. Did, did, it, did it get over the air? Was it close enough? Probably. We're probably good. Is that right? Okay. Test. Okay. As the objector, you have the opportunity to present your case. Thank you. This will be brief. So purchased the property in January of this year, paid $325,000 for it. The, it was reviewed, I had submitted that, and the tax bill was amended to four hundred fifty-six, dollars which is what I'm presenting here. Exhibit A, page two of what you have, just did a quick comparison of the adjoining, adjoining properties, which there are several adjoining properties that are similar, per, uh, than, that were built all in 1864. That whole block was built in 1864. So when I was just comparing our, to my neighboring businesses that, um, or bu buildings in the area, comparing their tax rate to, to the tax rate for, for my property, it uh, didn't quite seem, um, seem in parity with, with the, uh, the other items. So you can see that the middle section there, two and three properties, in total there's two tax bills. Those are appraised at 339,200. That's 68%, 68.5% of the value that, that my building is appraised at. And number four, which is the Freakazoid Toy Retail short Store, that property is appraised at 46.5% of what my building is appraised at. And I'm looking at the very far column on Exhibit A. I completely agree with the land value. We match 
between properties, it's the improvement value that um, for, for the buildings. And I may not be privy to all of the information. Okay. Um, any questions of the assessor? Um, Would you step up to the mic, please? Uh, how, how long was the property on the market? I don't know exactly. I think it has been over a year. And then what is the condition on the interior of the property? It's okay. It's dated. It's got, I would like to put money to invest in it rather than paying money, uh, the 17000 a year for taxes. Sure. Uh, second floor, is that rented? So I occupy the second floor with my business, but it's only half of it, and half of it is, is tentative right now. It's a short-term lease. Okay. How about the first floor with occupancy? The first floor I have rented a uh, very minimal charge uh, at this point. Half of it is rented. Okay, got no further questions. Thank you. Questions of the board? Do you happen to have the appraisal? Did you have an appraisal done? I did not have an appraisal. You did not have an appraisal done? No. I'm I had an inspection. So there was no appraisal prior, prior to the financing? I self-financed. And uh, the income numbers. What are the what is the income on the property? Um, again, I'm paying the majority of the rent right now to myself. Okay. And the lower level you said is not rented, or is partially rented. Half of it is rented, and half of it I'm just renting for. Currently, the rent is a thousand a month. Okay. Thank you. It had been not fully occupied for a very, very long time. On your comparables, um, do you have the square footage of these other properties? I wasn't able to find that in the public record, although I can tell you that um, the real estate agents seem to list the square footage all over the board, including basements and, you know, seems like just all over the board. So the, I did do, do a little checking on that. Um, the 520 property was listed at 13,221 square feet. The two, this, the two proper, I'm not positive, but I saw something, again, this is, it's not public, the square feet. 3,200, but I think that was only a portion of either five, 522. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Assessor? Uh, first handout that I have for you is a copy of the property record card. And uh, this particular building is 9,760 square feet. Um, when we look at the last page, we look at the assessment history of the property. Um, starting back to the digital records that are available, 2005, uh, the property was assessed at 486,000. 
Um, there was a reassessment back in 2006. It went up to 695,000. Uh, that prop uh, property value carried to the revaluation of 2014 and went down to um, 592,000 until uh, there was a reduction this year in consideration of the present uh, use and carrying capacity of, um, of the subject property to 456,000. Um, one of the things that's unique in uh, the market in Sheboygan is uh, since the last reassessment, 2014, which is the basis for all assessments, you know, properties have gone in different directions, residential, commercial, and then within each of those classes, uh, there's significant um, changes based on market forces. None of those market forces has been exerted, you know, in, in the assessment process, changing individual properties. Um, that leads us to our next handout, which um, is paper clipped together here, uh, called 2021 Board of Review, uh, Appeal Considerations for the City of Sheboygan. And essentially, this document uh, talks about uh, not changing assessments in a non-revaluation year unless something is materially changed with the specific property. You know, there was, uh, the square footage was in, listed incorrectly. There were additions or remodeling or deterioration, something that would material, materially change. Um, the performance of the property is something that could also change based on its income and expense revenue. Um, and I think that that is uh, uh, an acceptable practice is to not change the assessment clearly just for a market force by which everybody else is uh, treated by the same yardstick and only if there's something that's changed with the property. Originally the property uh, was valued in 2014 um, using acceptable practices, professionally acceptable appraisal standards, um, using mass appraisal process. Um, and it would behoove the assessor to simply change one property when many of its peers are treated by the same yardstick. Uh, the Board of Review and Circuit Court, of course, have a different standard that they can apply. They're looking at an, an individual property. So I, I think it's a mistake for the assessor to simply, in, the, in this case or in others, whether the, uh, the sale price is higher or lower than the assessed value to simply chase that particular sale. Um, there's some guidance in the, in the uh, second or the, the back pages of that handout that's labeled uh, 2021 property assessment information. And this is a, a February of 2021 uh, response from the Department of Revenue. Um, and it was uh, a response to the Wisconsin Association of Assessing Officers um, and addressing their concerns of the new market forces as uh, uh, that COVID brought with us. And the essence of this document is in a non-revaluation year, don't make changes for uh, COVID in particular and what it has brought upon us. And uh, so I think that's the stance on behalf of the assessor's office in non-revaluation year, don't make a change that can't be justified by a change in, of the static information. Um, I've got nothing further at this time. Any questions of the director? Yes. My presentation related to um, the comparison to the properties 
adjacent to, to the uh, 532 North 8th Street and their value, which had been set for some time prior to COVID. And I'm wondering if you might be able to address that. Uh, the only property I was able to look up is, um, you know, 532, which is your building, is at 9,760 square feet. Uh, 526 North 8th is at 6,750 square feet. So it's, uh, it's about two-thirds the size. Okay. I didn't get to, to find uh, 520. So there are, there are two tax bills that are, so you looked at the com combination of the two tax bills that I've got delineated? I just looked up the addresses quickly while, while you were presenting. Okay. Uh, uh, both tax bills, though, because I my comparison here has both 526 and 522 together. Um, <coughs> when, when I look as as far as parcel numbers go. 522 and, well, 522 is listed by itself. Correct. Within our system. And that's at 3,200 square feet. If I look at 520, which includes 518, uh, that is... <coughs> 8,766 square feet. But I don't show an address specifically listing 522. No, I'm sorry. I meant 526 and 522. Yeah, I, yeah 526, right. I, I don't show a separate address. So the combination of those two properties is, is more than more than double what's showing up on the area of one, if I understand you correctly. Yeah, that's all, again, that I'm showing is 522 is uh, listed at 3,200 square feet. What's the square footage on uh, 532? On uh, 9760. Do we have any recent sale information on either any of these comparables that the objector has noted? Um, Mr. Chair, I, I did just find the 526 North 8th, and that is 6,750 square feet. And if I'm looking at... Uh, the sales of any of those properties. Uh, 526, uh, I don't show, show uh, a sale. Um, I, see, I see the most recent transaction is Toby Watson in December of 2013 had a listing at 536,000. but I think that was from another entity that he owned. So I don't see a, a, an arm's length sale. Uh, the same thing for 522. And 520, uh, the most recent transaction I see is December of 2011 for 160,000. Uh, there, I noticed there was a reduction in 2021. What was that based on? Improvements were reduced from 558, 800 down to 421. Yes, I, uh, I related that to a change in the information reg regarding the income and expense uh, uh, approach to, to valuation. Um, and uh, the change 
in its use. So that assessment was based on income and expense that was provided by the objector? The previous assessment was based on income and expense, and I don't, didn't feel that that any longer applied because now it's uh, primarily owner-occupied. Any other questions of the board? Either party? Mm. Either party have a summary comment? Sure. Director? Yes. Thank you. The comparisons, then, as I understand it, based upon the square foot, is there is there's a significantly less square footage in in one than in two and three combined. Um, I don't know if we have any history on what Toby Watson purchased two and three for, but four was purchased for, I believe you said 100 some thousand, 160 some thousand. The building one was purchased at a high price and it was at praised at a high price back when it was originally purchased by the, my, the previous owner. Um, to me, it appeared it was one of those situations where they needed the loan, they wanted the sale, made everyone happy and made the price match what was, what was being offered. Um, and it was, in my opinion, much higher than was reasonable for a building that was built in 1864 that has the bones of that building. And how are you aware of this? Of the sale? Yeah, you're saying that the, the sales were excessive or not arm's length? So I did see the appraisal that was done back in about, I think it was 10 years ago or so, and it was a, about a half a million dollar appraisal. But it was, I you know I've done business appraisals and in my opinion, it didn't have the elements that you typically look at. It was, it okay, was. So the, the appraisal you were talking about is 10 years old. It what? The appraisal that you were talking about is 10 year old appraisal that you saw? Yes, yes, okay. when it was like a half a billion dollars. But I believe that's what the appraisal in part had been based upon at that rate in comparison to these other buildings that are listed. Okay. City assessors, any closing comments? Sure. Uh, the last sale of the subject property was in December of 2002 for 545,000. Um, uh, again, to uh, project to the board is um, the assessor, I think, is uh, not reasonable for him to make a change simply due to a sale to chase it. Uh, the change for 2021 was made based on a change of use and change of uh, uh, going from income approach to uh, the cost, market modified cost approach, which the neighboring properties were also uh, created, their assessment was created on. Um, I uh, did feel compelled to make that change uh, for uniformity and equity uh, without changing the market forces of the assessed values. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, this will conclude the hearing. Uh, we will go into deliberation at the end of today's hearings, um, and you will be notified of the findings of this board within the next 10 days from the city clerk. No additional testimony is allowed. Thank you. We'll wait till 9.30 for the Next objection. Is there, is there any place I can get, is there a drinking fountain or? Water. Yeah. Oh, water. water. A jar. Water. Water. So we will stand in uh, recess 
uh, for the next 15 minutes. Okay. She's getting water. All right. I need some clarification and maybe, maybe Kathleen. <laughs> Because they're all in there. Oh, your contact is for Are you getting all this? Yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> you get even better than I did at least. <laughs> oh, she's not back in the quick. Yeah. It's this one, right? There's one over there. Are we passing? Just need water. All of a sudden, my mouth is running. <laughs> Oh, is it high? I, it's really high. It's really I walked down to the downtown and I'm like, oh, it's so high. It's like, it's like 60 degrees here. It's high. And I'm like, oh, it's oh. kind of my mouth. So now, what do you do? I work somewhere that. I do. Um, I work at Brooklyn Gardens. I'm an uh, education specialist. Oh. But previously, uh, before we moved up here, um, I worked for a construction management company in St. Louis for about years and then I worked for a local electrician for four years up here and so and so when I was representing the uh, quorum at the chamber in one of the things I met with people was Ryan Mayor Ryan yeah uh, was in our city meeting and so I think we talked about the fact that like you know if you wanted to see <laughs> on some of those and he says I work on Wellington and you've got a lot of construction <laughs> stuff there so I think you might be good for the board of review so Oh, well, nice. Good. But yeah, so I'm doing something completely different now at Brooklyn. I just uh, see field trips and cool. work with uh, children ages preschool to fifth grade. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I don't. I was appointed by three or four mayors before. <laughs> I was in insurance. And, uh, and that's probably why I got on when, oh my gosh, I've been retired for 14 years, so I wonder, I was on there for probably five years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then I was off. I didn't realize it. When, when we got a new mayor, he appointed his people, and I, oh, I was surprised. <laughs> um, and then that lasted about a year, and they, 
I'm <laughs> just going to walk. Sorry. 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 I currently am an education specialist at Oak Lawn Gardens, oh. um, but previous um, to that, I worked uh, down in St. Louis for Kaiser Green Construction oh. Company. Oh, oh. oh thank you so much. Oh. I should bring my own. Oh. <laughs> you're still learning, you're, you're still like exploring. Yeah. I've been working in Hogwarts for almost 20 years. <laughs> you know, once you get on, you don't get off. That's all right. It's <laughs> an interesting one to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're going to go Kitchen modern and <laughs> get you something that adds some taste to it. Mm -hmm. Nothing out of the realm of I was um, she was working working in Central Valley. And uh, and then I was still so I remodeled my bathroom and then I just remember my coffee and they came over and said, Okay, so and then we came in this room. Sure enough, within the month, within the month, I got the assistant. He said at the time, I ran according to my mole. <laughs> we have such no, no, anything. Oh, give me a break. <laughs> but I knew how long it took people to, you know, for them to actually make an appointment and get the assessment. Yeah, yeah she brought three. <laughs> Oh, 
had just done oh don't tell me that was a <laughs> coincidence Where is this? On um, um, St. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 yeah, it's 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 but in order to earn it, you have to use some kind of witness to see what happens. Or you can draw the <laughs> They barricade the door to Christ so every time we go in our front bedroom. Oh, yeah. 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 I, my uh, office was that right. building on corner 7th there. But now it's three. One that has all those dumb <laughs> bottles and stuff around in it. Yes. That's where my other state farm agent is. Mm -hmm. Office. I think we're in the office. Where did you look up at? Because you can do it now. Can we move it? I guess you feel more down there. <laughs> I know. I, I guess I have to kind of balance. I think because of the still the six feet away, that's yeah, great. Yeah. If not, we would be right next to each other. So yeah. Which one? Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. Renting downstairs or half of it rented downstairs or something. 
I mean, it's a huge, beautiful book. Yeah. I mean, it's a beautiful book. Yes, it's really, really nice. I know we're going to discuss it, but my question is, she provided the book. They're not for sale. haven't been sold at all. We should just give her to me. You know what? We have to have more proof. I know what they say because my son knew I went in his place and he had all these things and he thought they were just so valuable and he would bring the package over there. Some of them were. Really? Yeah. And it didn't give him any money. His brother said, You what? And I said, I don't know much when it comes to money, but I can't do it. Right? Yeah. But they weren't there. They were down the street. Oh. Yeah, I don't think they're for sale. We'll we'll talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So we're saying to take a look at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think one of them is a little bigger. And then they would be. Then they they would have to tax them, so then they would be paying all these, you know. So the next one, um, we're not doing it the same time right away. She's going to have to read it. Michael's going to ask for a subpoena. We're going to grant the subpoena. Um, we're going to get them to agree that it's okay, and then we will. I had to do that. <laughs> it's here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'd like to uh, recall the Citizens Board of Review of the City of Sheboygan into session. At this time, uh, we'd like to review the uh, next objection. Uh, two objections brought together, one from FCE Morningside LLC, agent name Bill Ardern, property address 3431 North 13th Street, and parcel number 59281719360. Assessment shown on notice as 2368400 Opinion of assessed value is one million two hundred and fifty thousand. The next one that, that was presented together was Nationwide Health Proper Properties, agent name Bill Ardern, property address thirty one twenty nine Michigan Avenue, parcel number five nine two eight one two one three one six one. Assessment shown as three million one hundred thirty seven thousand four hundred. Opinion of assessed value, $2,240,000. Okay. The assessor has a request. Yes, I'd like to request to the board uh, not to grant the waiver at this time, but it, instead to issue a subpoena uh, for information. All right. Is there a motion? Motion and second to uh, grant the request. Uh, is that acceptable to the objector? Uh, yeah, we'll the All right. Thank you for your cooperation. Um, we will therefore uh, instruct the subpoena to be issued, and we will uh, postpone this hearing until a later date to be determined. Any questions by either party? No. If not, thank you for your participation and agreement on this matter. We will now go into recess.
for 20 minutes. They might be coming early. We can convene so. early.
I'd like to call the uh, Citizens Board review of the City of Sheboygan back into session. This time uh, we have the next objection to be heard. The objection is from RCS and Powers, Inc. And the address is 2213-2235 Calumet Drive in Sheboygan. The values, the assessment is shown at 1,328,500. And the opinion of the assessed value is $675,000. Um, one note to make about this hearing is that Board President Ken King is requested to be removed from the hearing. And I can swear everybody in. So I need who's ever going to be testifying to stand up and raise your right hand for me, please. All righty. 
And do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony which you shall give in the matter now on hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. I need each of you to state your name and address into the microphone over here for the record. Martha Vandalist, did you need our work address um, or personal? Personal address. Okay, Martha Vandalist, 1102 Creeks Cross Court, Kohler, Wisconsin. Michael Groda, Assessor, City of Sheboygan, 828 Center. Monica Sankfile, 2460 East Mark Drive in Sheboygan. Um, all right. Who wants to speak for? <laughs> yes, stand at the microphone and um, state in your opinion the amount of the fair market value of your property and what you're objecting to. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Speak into the mic. Oh, I thought I was. <laughs> okay. Now you state your what what you feel is your opinion of this property, the fair market value, and what you are objecting to. Again, my name is Monica Sankvile, and I am the Senior Vice President of HR and Administration at RCS. And part of my role is managing properties for RCS. And um, the fair market value that we identified on the objection to the real property assessment is 675,000. We identified land at 400,000 and building at 275,000. We don't have a fair market value because we haven't had the property assessed or had any opinion on that. Okay. Okay. Um, Do you want me to continue or? Yeah. Okay. Um, so first of all, we just want to thank the board for giving us the opportunity to present our objection this morning. We have provided the clerk with copies of the objection form and supporting information regarding Calumet Square. As a courtesy, we also provided the financial information, a copy of the objection form and materials to um, you, we also provided that to the assessor last week for his review. Is it okay for me to distribute copies of the information at this time to all of you? We have. I believe I do, except for the attorney would need a copy of everything, please. I prepared five copies, so you can have them all. <laughs> <laughs> and distribute as you feel necessary. Is that everything that you provided to me? Yes. Okay. Okay, so RCS purchased the property in 2015 for 1.875 million. At the time, we were looking at an opportunity that would require us to expand our operations. However, after we made the purchase, the opportunity and the options had changed for us. So why are we here today? That's a very good question. We, we filed the objection to the assessment um, quite simply because we weren't aware until now that the process it, it even existed. Um, Mr. King is a member of our board of directors, which is why we have asked him to recruit himself from participating in the hearing because we certainly do not want there to appear any conflict of interest. After Mr. King had toured our facility, he was amazed at the condition and the high vacancy of the property so he asked us if the property had been assessed or if we had it inspected by the city assessor's office, which we had not. He then made, aware, made us aware of the process and that's why we are here today. There are circumstances that have changed in the last six years since RCS purchased the property. First, we don't consider the location any longer to be a high traffic retail area. 
We have had other interested parties in the property. However, none of them pursued it further with us. We were able to secure Polyfab as a tenant for warehouse space in the former pick and save store unit. However, that only accounts for about 15,000 square feet of the 53,000 square feet of the building. We are also being assessed, we believe, as this property has air conditioning, which it does not. We have had two, we have two additional vacant properties. They're unapproved retail spaces that amount to about 2,700 square feet that are located at the north end of the building. We believe these vacant units are being assessed as occupied retail buildings. Another concern that we have with the assessment in valuation and assess value of the land, currently we have a parking lot that has very little utilization and options. We'd love to sell a parking lot, but it's not very marketable, especially in this area. We also want to cite the value of a similar parcel located on North Avenue, which was previously North Bowl Lanes. This parcel is approximately the same size, but is valued and assessed at less than half of the assessment of our acreage. The parking lot on North Avenue on this property is still paved, but does not have the maintenance costs or upkeep and responsibilities we have for snowplow, et cetera. Therefore, we are requesting the assessed value of both the land and improvement be adjusted to accurately reflect a more equitable assessment. Along with our objection, we provided a number of exhibits and to support our objection, and I'd like to go through each one of those with you um, at this time. Exhibit one is the financial statement, and I'm gonna ask Martha to step up and go over that with you first. Okay, so exhibit one is a comparative of two financial, full financial years, um, 2019 and 2020. 2019 shows income of 187, 230. 2020 shows income of 180, 269. This income represents um, Polyfab, which Monica had mentioned, which is warehouse space currently, King Walk, which closed in 2020, so that's why there's a reduced in income, reduced amount in income. The Dollar Tree and Papa Murphy's are the last remaining. The income reduction again was King Walks at the, after the first quarter, and the revenue includes the current rents, less the rebates we have to give because the pick and save area was never rented out as additional retail. So there's re rebates we have to give as a percentage of that property not being vacated as retail space. The bottom line is a loss of 32,679 in 2019 and a loss of 16,152 in 2020. Thank you. Moving on, exhibits two and three merely represent a summary of the maintenance needs for the property in both the years 2019 and 2020. Exhibit four identifies the occupied versus the unoccupied space. The important thing we wanna note here is that 57% of the total property is currently vacant. In addition of the total square footage of that property, 78% is not air conditioned. And that is made up by the entire pick and save unit as well as the vacant north unit. Exhibit five represents the property assessment from the city for the old pick and save unit. It identifies the de designated use as a neighborhood shopping center and it really should be designated as warehouse. Again, this unit has no air conditioning. Exhibit six, there are three pages. The first set of photos represents the interior of the old pick and save unit showing the leased space for warehousing and the remainder as vacant space. The next set of photos represent the smaller vacant units. The north unit is unfinished 
and then you can see the old vacant Boost Mobile unit. The final set of photos shows the vacant parking lot and the back alley to the property. Exhibit seven represents com comparable land at the old North Bowl location on North Avenue. This property is comparable in size at approximately six acres and is assessed at $363,300. The six acres of land at Calumet Square is assessed at 980,700. Exhibit eight represents the most recent property tax bill for the property. At this time, both Martha and I would entertain any questions that anyone has regarding the property. Um, does <coughs> Ms. Esser, do you have questions for them? What's his name? Mike. Mike? Do you have questions? Yeah. I'm sorry, uh, do you have another handout? I, I don't have any of the exhibits. Has, uh, has there been a concerted effort to do any um, listing or to get uh, tenants in the vacant spaces? Not other than um, the ones that RCS has been approached by. We've had probably four to five different interested parties over the time that we have um, own the property and we and we have fully explored all of these options every time that we have been made aware Okay I've got no other questions Does anyone from the Board of Review have questions? Sure we purchased it after Pick and Save had vacated. Okay. And how, when was that? 2015. 2015. And since then, you still lost tenants? Correct. When we purchased the property, Boost Mobile occupied one of the um, units. They vacated shortly after we purchased um, in 2020. King Walk closed his restaurant, and we did not observe any rent from King Walk for the entire year, or almost the entire year of 2020, and that impacted it as well. Okay. Um, anyone else have questions? Okay, Assessor. Uh, the subject property at 2213 Calumet Drive uh, is composed of a, a parcel sitting 6.254 acres. Uh, the building itself is approximately 53,457 square feet. Uh, it's a multi-tenant with, uh, with an anchor. Uh, the, currently the anchor, uh, it's a vacated space. Um, looking at the back page of this handout uh, gives the short history on the um, current parcel configuration and the assessment. The assessment hasn't changed, um, you know, since 2018. And if I look at the assessment history, 
uh, for this for this property. Um, going back um, throughout the years. In 2009, uh, the property was assessed at $4,150,000. Uh, and then during the years 2010 through 2013, there were uh, other reductions that were made. Uh, in 2014, uh, the, uh, the last citywide revaluation, the assessment was uh, reduced to $1,290,000. Um, from my perusal of the record, it, uh, it appears that the concerns uh, relative to the condition of the building have been addressed. Uh, there have been a, a 93% percent discount to uh, the uh, useful life of the building. So the building, you know, 53,000 square feet has a total assessed value of 347,800. So the building is a contributory factor to the, to the uh, total property is, is very small. Uh, the 6.254 acres is assessed at uh, 980,700 or approximately 157,000 per acre. Um, there was mention of a property at 2022 North Avenue uh, that's uh, uh, a former bowling alley. The bowling alley was removed. Uh, the land value has uh, remained the same. Uh, that is at approximately 60,000 per acre. Uh, it does appear to be on the low side uh, for what the property sold for. I think it sold for eight and a quarter with the bowling alley and then subsequently that was raised. Uh, there is a r irregular shape to that uh, property and it does sit on more of a secondary uh, road. However, it was close to Calumet Drive. I did do some uh, research in looking at other uh, commercial parcels in that uh, similar area. And there's the property at 2033 North Avenue. Uh, and that on a per acre basis is at 415,000 per acre. It's smaller. Um, 2610 Calumet Drive is at 327,000 per acre. Uh, property at 2619 Calumet Drive is at 870,000 per acre. And then the last property at 2713 Calumet Drive was at 653,000 per acre. Um, so by my perusal of uh, looking at common or neighboring assessments, you know, uh, because those parcels are a little bit smaller than the subject property, they should command a higher per acre value. Um, the subject property at 2213 Calumet, in my opinion, is assessed uniformly and equitably at 157,000 per acre. Uh, the loan property that I could see in looking here was uh, that sticks out is the North Avenue property, which appears to be valued quite a bit less per acre. Um, so I'm uh, not bringing sales of other similar properties uh, that I, because I don't think that there's a similar property in the condition uh, that the subject property is. Uh, there is a sale of the subject, uh, although, um, I wouldn't call that recent. It's certainly an indication of the value of the property uh, in its present state, uh, which has declined over the years. Um, so I think that the present condition is uh, considered in the total assessment of 1,328,500. Um, 
and that the assessment is reasonable in light of the sale of the subject and in uh, looking at comparable land values, the land appears to be uh, reasonable as well, being both equitable and uniform uh, with one uh, isolated case that looks uh, uh, where that sub that assessment is uh, too low. Thank you. Do you have can questions I, for him? Can, or can I make a statement? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so there's definitely something to say about location, 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 and um, the properties, the North Bowl property we feel has a lot of similarities between um, the property on Calumet Square. Again, it's the same size. The adjacent property is not retail, it's industrial and commercial. The property has a large paved parking lot, which again does not need to be maintained. As we mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, parking lots um, are just have very little value unless they complement an ongoing business. The property is in deep is deep in area and has limited frontage for access and therefore limits the appeal for development. And if that property was developable, if that's a word, it would have been developed by now. The major difference is that our assessed land value is approximately two and a half times that of the North Avenue property for approximately the same size. The current best use of the property at Calumet Square is warehouse other than the two current retail operations. Thank you. Okay. Um. Anything I've got worse? nothing further to add. I think in the, the end of my testimony, I kind of already pro provided a summary. Um, and I, I believe that the issues with the property, uh, uh, in my opinion, are uh, have been addressed in, in, in an adequate fashion. Thank you. Okay. Board members? I just, when you keep saying the North Avenue property does not have to be maintained, why not? <laughs> I mean, somebody so, has to plow it, somebody has to. So it's not being used, so I can only make the assumption that they don't have snow removal costs that they incur for the property like we would for Calumet Square. Oh, well, I think it's always plowed. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's all. Um, anything else? Any other comments? Questions? Thank you. Thank you. Um, we will um, take deliberations at the end of our session and make a decision and you will hear from us within 10 days. Cheers. <laughs> Are there any other objections that have been filed? Nope, there are not. Having no other object objections um, be filed, um, we will close the hearings for today. Should be noted that there is, uh, based on superior uh, Subpoenas previously mentioned and offered that we will be meeting on that item and um, objection at some time to be determined in the future. Having nothing else, uh, this the hearings will therefore uh, end as of today. We will go into deliberation within the next 10 minutes. Okay, in case anybody needs a break. <laughs> Pardon? No, no, it'll be open. It needs to be open.
only have one property. give everyone a chance to kind of if we don't need a break we can continue sure that's acceptable All right all right we will reconvene uh, for the sake of going through deliberations it would be noted at this time no additional testimony is allowed by any party um, and um, we will move forward. The first objection, clerk. You want me to read it back in? Sure. First objection was property address 532 North 8th Street. The assessment was for $456,100. The opinion of the assessed value was for $325,100. Observations, questions, and discussion? This has already been forwarded. Yep. It's on. Okay, there we are. That was my question, and I go ahead. I answered it. This has already been um, reviewed and lowered. Correct. Correct. Okay. Any other observations? Um, I'm just my observation, or what I'm looking at is yes, he provided information on comparables. Not really comparables, just her neighboring places, where I believe to have a more accurate value on appraisal would have been better versus the properties right next door. She's just comparing, um, saying my neighborings are XYZ value versus hers. I just think we need more information, either an appraisal, something that gives us a more accurate value in order for us to determine a better, like saying, yes, her value is true. She just purchased it at the beginning of the year, and she did not have an appraisal done, so she just bought it as is. Yeah. <clears throat> also, this property was listed for considerable period of time. So my question, uh, I guess, that I would like to have, have, have answered with a, an appraisal or a current appraisal um, would be what would the fair market value really be um, given the fact that this appears after commercial properties on the market for a year or more or any properties on the uh, market for a year or more is a distressed property mm -hmm. and is it truly an arm's length transaction yes because she also had stated that what last time that it was sold it was sold for a lot more also so we don't have that information I mean what was it 10 years ago I believe um. yeah, further the uh, tax rolls um, that were provided by the assessor, you can see that the property um, had a significant reduction in 2021 mm -hmm. as a revalue, revaluation. Um, 130 plus thousand. Any other observations or questions? Comments? Um, I would entertain a motion then. Was she, excuse me. Was she already uh, had her business in this? I didn't ask her that. When yeah. she bought it? I don't know if her business was in there uh, prior to the purchase or not. Okay. That's 
Okay. But as of right now, she's the only tenant upstairs since paying herself rent. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming um, that. Well, she has a tenant downstairs that pays the thousand a month, yeah. but we don't know what the upstairs right. is. So and there was no uh, income or expense uh, justification provided either in this case. Correct. Well, considering all of that, I make a motion that we uphold the assessor. I make a motion that we uphold the assessed value. I second. So we have a motion and second to uphold the appraiser, uh, appraiser yes, uh, and assessed value at 456,100. Do I have a second? Yes, she second. Does. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, let it be known that all members voted in favor of upholding the assessor. I need to step away <laughs> and turn this over to I'll just take care. Pat <laughs> for deliberation. Okay. The next property we are um, uh, looking at is 2213 and 2235 Calumet Drive that is owned by RCS Empowers Incorporated. And they, um, it is assessed at 1,328,500 1, and they would like it to be 675,000. And they presented a lot of information. Any questions? Um, I do, and I, I don't know who the question would be for, but possibly the assessor. Um, so when we assess properties, we assess, no. go ahead. Excuse yeah. me, can't no ask the assessor. Ask questions? Okay. It has to be discussion based discussion. on the testimony that we've heard. Okay. Right. Hmm. I guess my discussion would be based on um, the property we is there a difference between warehouse and real is uh, real is there yeah is there a difference between how we value a warehouse versus retail building you know so um, I don't know if that is a discussion or question or what so we can ask those questions no. of the attorney. Oh, yeah. Oh. And, and <laughs> okay. in, in essence, what, what I would say is this. You are basing your determination on the information that came in at the hearing. Okay. Um, and so if you don't have information at the, from the hearing, then you, you can only base it on the information that you have in front of you. Now, I do believe that uh, there were some exhibits provided that at least uh, provide um, a modicum of detail on that, but that's all you can really rely on as, as far as making that decision because there, it, you, just simply what was presented to you mm -hmm. either orally or uh, in an exhibit. Hmm. Okay. Um, the other thing, the thing I noted is they said this is not air conditioned. Well, the whole warehouse apparently is not air conditioned and um, and there was a it's been assessed at having the HVAC warmed and cooled air and I don't know it's like a hundred percent of the area and then there's so that's a discrepancy I don't know whether that on that part. Um, I can see from the pictures that the parking lot looks pretty bad. And, and the grocery store doesn't, you know, it's just used for storage. However, they bought this property with the idea that it would be um, self-sufficient 
for a money maker, and it turned out it it isn't, and we cannot um, value it or the fact that it didn't turn out to be a, a money maker. Anyone else have a a thought? It says 59% of the building is vacant, unoccupied. And, and on the other hand, she also said that they were not pursuing renting it out, looking for tenants. Yeah, they, they had said that opportunities would come to them, but that they were not, it didn't seem like they were actively trying on right. their own. To, to, mm -hmm. to get the building occupied. But that doesn't determine <coughs> assessed value. <laughs> so, They, they just bought this in, in 18, oh, 12, 18, 15. So they've only had mm -hmm. it for nine, six years. And they bought it for 1875000 So I would say keep the value as is mm -hmm. for now, based on the information provided. Um, you know, they could still come back and question it later and provide other <coughs> documentation or maybe change the status of the building itself. But as is, it's still retail. It's still, yes, it's not being used for that, but it's still being as that. I agree. No changes have been made to change the designation of the building. It's still got a lot of the, the retail aspects to it, so maybe they can apply for a change in what type of building it is. And that could change the value yeah. later. I agree. Okay. So I think so, too. So the, uh, do I have a motion to uphold the assessor? I will motion to um, uphold the assessor's value at this time. And I will second that motion. The motion's passed. We will uphold the assessor's value. You want to call for the vote? Call for the vote. Oh, call. Oh, call. the oh. vote. Okay. All in favor. Yes. All in favor. <laughs> Say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. I turn the meeting back over to Ken. Okay, that completes the uh, that completes the uh, hearings and the citizens board of review. <coughs> we will now stand in adjournment um, for this year. Thank you. Not for the year. We'll stand in adjournment <laughs> until a future date to be determined. Specifically for the hearing on the uh, uh, properties regarding the subpoena. Okay. All right. Thank you all for your time and service. Mm -hmm.